Thank you for turning to page 121. Today we're going to take a look at medicine in Traveler. Yeah, it's really important. Uh, you're going to need a medic at some point or another. You're going to get shot. You're going to get bit by the alien creature. You're going to get hit by a bunch of radiation. At some point, you're going to need medical attention. So we're going to take a look at the history of medical in uh, Traveler. Specifically, we're going to use the my old new good friend, the 2022 Core Rulebook Update. We're going to take a look at medicine in here. I know that there's other supplements that have medicine, but for today I'm just going to focus with this book. Also, I want to remind everybody I'm on the uh, subscription drive. It's going great. I'm very close as of the making of this video. Just a little bit more to put me over the top. So if you've been on the fence, come on in. We talk about games a lot here. Also, I'm doing a Patreon, which is going to be a write-up of my version of the planet Motmos from my latest Traveler campaign. I started my group out on Motmos, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, basically give you my background notes that I developed for Motmos. So I'm not claiming ownership. That, that's on the Traveler map in District 268. But I'm going to flesh it out a little bit, at least to show you how I fleshed it out in my campaign. But back to the topic at hand, medicine in Traveler. <clears throat> in today's video, we're going to focus on medicine in Traveler. You're going to need it at some point, as I said in the opening. First, we're going to take a look at the profession of being a doctor, which falls under the scholar. So there we have the scholar, and he has three choices for his career, field researcher, scientist, or physician. So there you go. You can be a physician and traveler if you want to. You know, the old Dr. McCoy, I'm a doctor, not a fill in the blank. Um, for the traveler doctor, Really, it's all about getting the medical skill and getting it up as high as you can. You want to have a med three, at least, in my opinion. Uh, I believe that's what you need to be, uh, to be called doctor. And that would be what I would want as, as my treating physician would be a med, medic three. Uh, medic four or medic five are much better than you're considered pretty proficient. Uh, the doctor from Firefly, who was this research MD genius who ends up on the run with the crew of Firefly, they lucked into a really, really good doctor in that case, which of course is part of what drives, drives the story of Firefly. But that's a good example of a high-level doctor working aboard basically a tramp freighter for room and board and his reason why. So that's kind of an interesting backstory. But anyway, you're going to need one once in a while. I, My most recent traveler adventure that, that I ran, uh, there was not a shot fired at all. The, it was all role-playing, and those happen. Those happen more frequently in Traveler than just about any other uh, game I play. So it's, it's very possible to run a Traveler campaign without combat. My guys would bail on me after a while if it was all role-playing. They like some combat. They like to mix it up a little bit. Uh, it's just how they like to play. It's our old D&D roots, I'm sure. But uh, because of that, we're going to need a medic. So now we're going to take a look at... The medic skill in tra whoops in traveler. Alrighty, going to the medic skill, and there we are, medic. This skill covers all emergency first aid and battlefield triage, as well as diagnosis, treatment, surgery, and long-term care. So, a medic is a medic. Some traveler campaigns. You have to have a medic who specializes. So if you're playing, for instance, in Aslan, you have to have a medic on board who knows about Aslan, who knows the anatomy of Aslan, how to treat them. Just because you can treat a human doesn't mean you can treat a Vargir. So some travelers, I, I give it as a negative modifier if they're trying to treat an alien species. It doesn't have to be of their species, it just has to be one that they're trained in medically. So if they don't have that, then I'll make it a difficulty modifier of maybe two, maybe even three, depending on how alien the species is to the human. I realize alien is a very relative term, but if the person is only trained in human anatomy and is trying to treat a Kakri, there's a big, big difference. Uh, so it's, it's just something that I add in and I recommend. I think the books even talk about it. Now we're going to take about medical and care supplies. What the heck do you need? Well, this is a, a short list. I've always been a little surprised at how little attention 
Traveler pays placed or a little attention they pay to medicine. It's so much a part of the game. You're recovering from your injury. Now there are very extensive rules for recovering from a long-term injury in Mongoose Traveler Second Edition. I'm just surprised that there isn't, frankly, more treatment. I know that there are some other uh, drugs that, that are brought out in the Central Supply Catalog, but for today I'm only going to focus what's on, on these pages. So first and uh, foremost, the cryobirth. Uh-oh, you've been injured in battle, you're, you're near death. There's only one way that they can save you. They have to keep you alive long enough to get you to medical care. They put you in a cryobirth, also in our game called the crash couch. Basically the icebox. It's a sudden freeze situation. It'll freeze you faster than a low berth, although this could be used as a low berth also. Uh, they start at tech level 10, uh, and they put you into stasis so you don't deteriorate any further before you can get to the appropriate medical treatment. We've had one or two travelers end up in these things. It's always good to have access to them. Uh, there are little portable versions that can go to the battlefield, uh, little portable uh, triage stations that'll have these so that you can try to help people who are, have been injured in battle survive. And then the ever popular medikit. I usually put a medikit in, in the uh, latest game I'm running with aboard a scout, that uh, 100 ton displacement scout that the troops, the guys are using. I've put four medikits on there, one each, each airlock and one up in the main crew area. And the idea of the medikit is it's a first aid kit, but some medikits are better than others. When you're starting at Tech level 8, they can uh, have some diagnostic devices and scanners, but tech level 8, you're going to take blood pressure and, you know, check for bleeding. Once you get to tech level 14, there's a densitometer in there to create a three-dimensional view of the patient's body, scan brain activity on the quantum level. Uh, all medicates weigh one kilogram, except at tech level 14 when their effective mass is zero kilogram. So, uh, the Star Trek Med Bay couches from the original series sick bay in next generation or even in the expanse the little uh, medical cuff that they put on those will all be good examples of medicates medical diagnosis things uh, also the tricorder that mccoy uses would be uh, medical diagnosis uh, thing so we're starting tech level uh, eight it costs a thousand uh, credits tech level 10 it grants a uh, die modifier plus one for first aid for a medic, 1,500 credits. Tech level 12, a die mod of plus two for medic checks, and it costs 5,000 credits. And tech level 14, die mod plus three on medic checks performed for first aid, and it costs 10,000 credits. By the way, put money into your medic kits and buy yourself a cryo couch or two, cryo birth. You're going to need these two items. I, I always encourage my players to go ahead and, and put some money into those very early. Now we're going to take a look at the pharmacopoeia available in Traveler. There's only the one page, but it's a pretty darn good page. There are plenty of other uh, medicines or drugs that are available in Traveler. I'm only going to talk about uh, today, right now, the, the ones that are on this page. So Anagathics, that starts at tech level 15. It slows the aging process. It can be a natural Anagathic. That would be like the spice in Dune. Or it can be one that's a uh, you know, manufactured compound. Uh, anagathics are illegal and heavily controlled on many worlds. One dose must be taken a month to get the anti-aging effect. And per dose, it's 20,000 credits. So you're into a habit of 20,000 credits per month to stave off old age. Now, as I said in a previous video, in Clement Sector 3rd Edition, they have an excellent way of having extended life genetically ma manipulate people so that their bodies don't deteriorate as fast. Anagathics become much less important if you're using that kind of system. Anti-rad drugs. They must be administered, they, these are tech level 8, they must be administered before or immediately within 10 minutes after a radiation exposure. They'll absorb up to 100 rads per dose, and you can only use uh, anti-rad once a day. Take more causes permanent endurance damage of one die per dose. So the more you take, the worse you're going to be. So don't, don't overdo the anti-rads, but have those around. And uh, I would also, as the GM, look for higher tech level ones that would do have more benefit for you than a, the tech level 8. Combat drugs. These are actually pretty cool. We've used these in a few campaigns. Uh, some ex-Marines 
had access to them uh, in one of my campaigns. So they, they had combat drugs and they had good connections and they, the, the crew was kind of flush so they were able to get their hands on them. They uh, increase reaction times and improve your body's responses to trauma. A traveler using combat drugs uh, gets a plus four die modifier to initiative rolls. They also gain a free reaction every round with no penalty applied and reduces all damage by minus two points. That's pretty sweet, and that would stack with armor, in my opinion. The drug kicks in around 20 seconds. That'd be roughly three rounds after ingestion or injection and lasts for 10 minutes. When the combat uh, drug wears off, you are fatigued. So you get really tired afterward. Combat drugs cost 1,000 credits per dose. So it's not something you want to be taking all the time, but it's still pretty cool. It's, it's a, a good thing to have around if you have the ac access to it. It's only tech level 10. Fast drug, also tech level 10, also called hibernation. This drug puts the user into a state of akin to a suspended animation, slowing their metabolic rate down to a ratio of 60 to 1. The subjective day for the user is actually two months. Fast drug is normally used to prolong life support reserves or as a cheap substitute for a cryobirth. 200 credits per dose. It's called fast drug because the world around you seems to be moving at a fast pace compared to your per perceptions. I kind of like that in Traveler, that the fast drug slows you down and the slow drug speeds you up, all based on your perception. Medicinal drugs. These start at tech level 5 and they include vaccines, antitoxins, antibiotics. Their engine costs from 5 credits to several thousand credits depending on the rarity and complexity. Medicinal drugs require the medical skill to use properly. Using the wrong drug can be worse than doing nothing. Definitely recommend you have a few people in your uh, crew or your team who have the medic skill. It's very useful to have at least two, three people that have at least medical one. <clears throat> Metabolic accelerator starts at tech level 10. This boosts the reaction time to superhuman levels. To the user, everyone else appears to be moving much slower. A traveler using metabolic accelerator in combat gains a die modifier plus 8 to all initiative rolls. They also gain two free reactions every round with no penalties applied for either. The drug kicks in 45 seconds after ingestion or injection and lasts for 10 minutes. When the drug wears off, the user system crashes. They suffer two die points of damage and are fatigued. And the metabolic accelerator costs 500 credits per dose. That's just a big, bad improvement on the combat drugs. But the negative effects of the metabolic accelerator are greater. So for my money, I'll stay with the combat drugs. Panaceas. I wish there was more information in this book about the panaceas. Panacea is a cure-all for everything. That's what the word means. It starts at tech level 8. These are wide-spectrum medical drugs specifically designed not to interact harmfully. They can therefore be used on any wound or illness and are guaranteed not to make things worse. Travelers using panacea may make a medical check as if they had medic zero when treating an infection or disease. And they are 200 credits per dose. So panaceas would be kind of like your antibiotic creams, even though antibiotics are talked about here. Uh, I took the those as being antibiotic creams, your uh, acetaminophen or ibuprofen, um, those kind of things. Just stuff that will... Not only help you make you feel better, but if you've got a fever, will help bring the fever down. That sort of thing. Now we get the slow drug, the opposite of the fast drug. And it starts at tech level 11, and it's a variant of the metabolic accelerator. It can only be applied safely in a medical facility where life support and cryotechnology is available. As it increases the metas metabolism to around 30 times normal, allowing a patient to undergo a month of healing in a single day. Using this drug outside of a hospital or sick bay is a messy and painful way to commit suicide as the user will rapidly cook their internal organs and suffer massive brain damage. Slow drug costs 500 credits per dose. So you've just got that nonspecific wound from Traveler. Uh, you, you, you've got a flesh wound in your thigh and you need to heal it up fast. You go to a medical facility and they put slow drug on you and it accelerates your metabolism. Uh, we also make it that you get ravenously hungry while you're on this drug, so you must eat or have nutrients pumped into you while you're on it. And then the last one we come to is stims, tech level 8. These relieve fatigue, although at a cost. The traveler who uses stims removes fatigue, but they sustain one point of damage. If stims are used repeatedly without natural sleep in between, the user suffers a cumulative additional point of damage every time. So the second dose is two points of damage, the third is three, and so on. And they cost 50 credits per dose. You see stims commonly in science fiction. The original Star Trek uh, would show stim use. 
it's it's a pretty common science science fiction trope where you've been up for 48 hours you need to stay sharp so you you take that next stim the other thing in traveler that sometimes your travelers may dabble in would be uh recreational drugs i'm not going to go into a ton of detail on that uh because that's not what my channel is about but they can be something that happens in your traveler game i did a game not terribly long ago where the crew of the ship found themselves with a consigned cargo off they went to deliver it along with their other cargo and that the one crate that they took basically as just a carrier turned out to have contraband in it recreational drugs that were banned on the planet they were landing on that took some fancy explanations to to get them out of their trouble but it made for some really interesting role playing uh, also some talk as to whether they want to profit from the possession of those. But again, I'm not going to go into that. That's not what my channel is about. So those are the drugs there. The only other main drug uh, would be side drugs. And there are a few others, a few of those rather. There are multiple versions of side drugs, but I'm going to cover those when I talk about psionics. So that's it for today for a uh, look at medical care and supplies. Of course, there's cybernetics, cybernetic replacements for body parts that don't heal up properly. And a lot of other things that you can add to your science fiction, you know, fast regen, things like that. Uh, Star Trek seems kind of ambivalent uh, about how they heal up. They just suddenly feel better. I like that. Uh, I have no objection to a medikit working somewhat like it does in Traveler, where once the application of the medikit is, has been done, you actually start feeling better in that you get a few points back. It, you know, they stitch the wound, you can use the arm better, whatever the... The situation is you just get a few wounds back. So generally what I'll do is I'll allow a die six starting around tech level 10. And then for every tech level above that, I'll put maybe a modifier of plus one uh, up to a total of die six plus five. Now that is getting extreme for Traveler. But I also, uh, right now I'm running the alternate hit point system where I'm just pooling everybody's physical statistics into a pool to give them hit points. My players are more interested in hit points. They feel it's a better gauge. Um, they don't want to be in a body that's deteriorating as it takes damage. Uh, pretty much all of us have some medical issue or another uh, when we're sitting at the table. And we've all kind of agreed we don't need to have that in our fantasy life if we have it every day in our daily life. So that's kind of our escapism. We just use hit points instead of having our stats deteriorate. So we do want a way to heal up the hit points a little bit better than normal Traveler would allow, but however you play Traveler is entirely up to you. If you want to play rules as written, where you lose your endurance and then either your strength or your dex, once you're down to zero and both stats are unconscious, once you're down to zero and all three, you're, you're no longer with us, unless of course you get to that cryobirth, then uh, that's, that's entirely up to you. That's how you play. So that's all I've got to say today on page 121. Uh, again, I'm still doing the, uh, the boom or the push for subscribers. So if you can help me out, that'd be great. And I'm also going to be doing the Patreon. That'll most likely come out in early June for the uh, Traveler end of it. I'm also doing one for the D&D end of it, but I talk about that in the D&D videos. So that's all I've got to say today. I hope you like what you heard and saw. If you did, please like and subscribe. There's a look at the my newest old best friend, uh, the Traveler Core Rule Update 2022. I love this book. I think Mongoose did a great job. And I'm going to continue, continue featuring videos out of it. So if you have any comments or uh, polite criticisms, leave them below, and I'll see you next time on page 121.